Hi, my name's James, and I'm a scientist. Now, science wasn't always on the list of careers for me when I was growing up. Hey, prime minister maybe, but certainly not science. That was the stuff for tall poppies. For a start, no one in my family had ever been a scientist or been to university full stop for that matter. And I really wasn't sure about working in a lab all day and wearing a white coat. But do you remember that one teacher in high school that really inspired you? Well, for me, that was my chemistry teacher, Mr. Gladding. To be honest, it was the loud bangs and explosions that sold me in the first place. I remember one day Mr. Gladding had brewed up a concoction of this stuff called touch powder, which he poured on the footpath outside the classroom. The lunch bell rang, kids ran out of their classrooms, and the stuff popped and exploded under their feet. Look, we never got that sort of cool stuff in geography or economics, I'm just saying. But Mr. Gladding also really inspired me with the promise that chemistry held to do good things in the world and that not all scientists wear white coats. Fast forward a few years, you can imagine how proud my mum and dad were when I got offered a place at the University of Cambridge to do a PhD in chemistry. I packed my bags, I was off to the UK to jump into the world of research. It was at this stage that I really started to get excited about the power that science holds to transform lives and change the world by solving problems. And I mean some big problems. COVID-19 is a big problem that's playing out before our eyes and in real time. And the global scientific community is mounting a mammoth effort to tackle the pandemic. But these sorts of big global challenges are really nothing new. The United Nations launched the Sustainable Development Goals back in 2015. And Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General of the UN at the time, said that there's no plan B for tackling these challenges because there is no planet B. We have no plan B because we simply have no planet B. And here are some of the things he was talking about. 25,000 people die from drug-resistant infections alone in Europe every year. That's about the same number of people that die on that continent from road accidents. Three and a half billion people, that's almost half the world's population, are thought to be at risk of malaria. What about food production? Well, one hectare of land in 1950 could grow enough food to feed two people. Fast forward 100 years, that same bit of land is going to need to provide food for six people if we're going to support our growing global population. Here in New Zealand, a massive chunk of our waterways are thought to be unswimmable because of pollution. And we have a terrible track record in this country when it comes to equitable access to health care, especially for our Māori communities. This is something we really must get on top of. And that's before we've even got into the big meaty challenge of climate change. But hang on, what's all this got to do with science? Well, it turns out that science can help fix a lot of this stuff and that we're well on our way to creating a globally competitive technology sector right here in New Zealand that is doing just that. And this is where my journey as a scientist comes in. I lead the Kiwi Innovation Network, or KiwiNet for short, and we're helping New Zealand grow by turning scientific research into market-ready opportunities. We're doing this by pooling resources and funding from New Zealand's universities and research institutes to support and accelerate research commercialization. So what this means is our support enables New Zealand's clever scientific discoveries to be developed further, ready for private investment, so they can ultimately become the new products, services and companies that are transforming lives and changing the world from right here in New Zealand. Some of the companies we've helped to create and support include Hot Lime Labs, who are reducing the carbon footprint of commercial greenhouses by providing a sustainable source of the carbon dioxide they need to grow their plants. Or what about Avalia Therapeutics, that are leading New Zealand's response to a COVID-19 vaccine? Then there's X-Frame, that's revolutionising the way we think about building by eliminating waste and reducing the amount of raw materials being used by the building industry. 
Then there's Inclusis, who have developed a clever product called Talk With Me that's enabling autistic children to communicate with their families for the very first time. And right here in the mighty Waikato, Ligar polymers are using their clever chemistry to remove toxic metals from industrial waste and are now working with the Māori economy to create a whole new biotechnology sector right here in New Zealand that will create valuable products from horticultural waste. Who'd have thought there could be so much useful stuff in kiwi fruit skins out of all things? And the list goes on and on. Now, this all sounds really easy. But of course, like many things in life, it ain't that simple. But let's wind back the clock a moment to James at age 28, who's now officially a mad scientist. I just got to the end of this amazing PhD experience and was now a doctor of chemistry, which was no good for members of the family lining up for free healthcare, by the way, but that's another story. By this stage, I was absolutely loving the world of research, creating new discoveries and pushing back the frontiers of knowledge. But the thing that was niggling away in the back of my mind was that all too often, these clever scientific discoveries, these golden nuggets of new knowledge we were creating in the lab, would almost get stuck in the world of research. They weren't always finding their way out into the real world where they could make a tangible difference to people's lives. And this made me think, what if there were more people with a deep knowledge of science and the scientific method, people like me, that could help put more of the science to use. It turns out that in New Zealand, we have a thriving science base that punches well above its weight internationally, and we have all of the right ingredients to turn this clever science into game-changing innovations. And this is what attracted me back home to New Zealand a belief in the power of our ideas, our know-how, and our innovative spirit to create technology solutions to the big global challenges we face and lead the world in doing so. And it's more important now than ever that we accelerate this as a nation because of the massive impact that COVID-19 is having on our economy. You can almost think of our economy as a rainforest ecosystem. Thriving rainforests are highly productive. They have a rich biodiversity and symbiotic relationships that enable life to flourish and prosper well beyond its boundaries. The rainforest canopy consists of the big plants that support the rest of the ecosystem. Now, the New Zealand economic rainforest canopy currently consists of about three or four big types of plants, one of which is failing before our very eyes if we think of how our tourism sector has been decimated by the pandemic. So the way things are panning out, we're going to be left with some pretty big holes in our rainforest canopy. And our struggling economic rainforest can only support a limited number of people to work in it. As plants die away, many people are losing their niches or being left behind. 40,000 jobs were lost in only the first five weeks of the COVID-19 lockdown here in New Zealand, and that's already halfway towards the total number of jobs that were lost during the 2009 recession. So things are looking pretty bleak for future generations of Kiwis that are going to have to find a way to survive and prosper in this uncertain future. But even before this started to happen, I've been wondering about what sort of planet we're leaving behind for them to inherit anyway. The need to take action now on all of this has only become more urgent. So here's the opportunity. This is the time for new ideas. The time to create some new beginnings for Aotearoa New Zealand, to tackle things like health inequity, environmental sustainability, food production, climate change, and not to mention future pandemics, while rebuilding our economy. What if we were to use our COVID-19 recovery to build a much more diverse economic rainforest with a plethora of different plants? while also embedding the Māori principles of kaitiakitanga, or guardianship, that aim to care for our land, our resources, and our people, not just now, but far into the future. Well, I can tell you that we would end up with something that is very unique to Aotearoa New Zealand. The great news is we don't have to sacrifice anything to do this. 
we don't have to throw out what we're already good at and start again. New Zealand can do this by enhancing the very primary sectors that are at the core of our heritage, by leading their transformation from high volume commodities through to unique high value products that will give us a competitive advantage. So I want you to imagine for just a moment that growing into the gaps of our rainforest canopy were 100 high growth technology startups led by 100 inspired entrepreneurs. An ecosystem bringing forth technology solutions to global challenges while driving our economic recovery, deploying the many people who have lost their jobs through the recession and creating exciting new opportunities for our young people. Not only would our rejuvenated rainforest be diverse and resilient, it would be nurturing a thriving entrepreneurial workforce and leading the world. Through our work at KiwiNet, we're making real strides in bringing about this prosperous future for New Zealand. We're accelerating cutting edge technologies out of our universities and research institutes and into our new economy. The secret to our success is that all of the organisations within the KiwiNet family are collaborating in a uniquely Kiwi way to do what's best for New Zealand rather than going it alone. In a little over 10 years, the KiwiNet whānau have already created over 50 new technology startups that have already generated hundreds of millions of dollars in our economy and have created over 500 new high value jobs for New Zealanders all from our homegrown Kiwi science, and things are really starting to speed up. The magic works by sprinkling these clever scientific discoveries with a dash of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs are ambitious, they're resourceful, and they're also open to new ways of thinking. They're the inhabitants of our new economic rainforest. They're the people that know what it takes, with the mindset and the skills to start with an idea and transform it into something special. Importantly, they come from a diverse range of backgrounds and in all shapes, sizes and colours. The thing is, entrepreneurship's not something that's reserved for people with some sort of privilege. It's not about just running businesses and making money. It's a mindset that's applied to everything we do in life. It's about being bold, being driven, and being decisive. One of our most famous Kiwi innovators, the late Sir Paul Callaghan, once said that New Zealand's future prosperity would be completely transformed with only 100 inspired entrepreneurs. Well, I think he was right. And that Aotearoa New Zealand needs this entrepreneurial insurgency now more than ever. So where on earth can we find all of these people? Well, it turns out that we're making a great start. Firstly, at KiwiNet, we've already found and are supporting 50 emerging innovators. These are 50 Kiwi scientists with an entrepreneurial spark that we've empowered to take the lead and are fast-tracking to success. Our emerging innovators are leading some of the many startup companies I spoke about earlier. And this program has been so successful that we're now actively fundraising to find and support our next 50 inspired leaders. Secondly, there's an important role here for the many talented New Zealanders that are currently returning home from overseas to escape the pandemic, bringing with them the skills and the experience that can be turned to something new. And of course, we can be deploying many of the Kiwis that have already found themselves unemployed through the recession. But for me, the most exciting and important opportunity here is how we support our young people to travel this journey, to nurture New Zealand's next generation of technology entrepreneurs. Because we're rapidly charging into a future where the nature of work will never be the same again. There will no longer be a job for life and we will all need to be adaptable. So this means that future generations of Kiwis will need to be entrepreneurs in order to thrive. And they will need to be literate in science to navigate the technology-based future. Now, when I embarked on my journey as a scientist, from the early days of the loud bangs and explosions, I never for a moment dreamed that I would end up doing what I do today. It turns out that science has given me all of the skills that I've needed to travel my own journey of entrepreneurship. And this has made me realize that science is for everyone. It enriches our lives by solving problems. 
It helps us to make sense of the crazy world around us. And most importantly, it empowers us to take the lead in making the world a better place. We all have our part to play to bring about this prosperous future for New Zealand. Whether we embrace our own entrepreneurial spirit or we support our next generation of Kiwis to become the tall poppies. It simply starts by encouraging our kids to be curious about science at school and by doing what we can to nurture their entrepreneurial spirit. I'm grateful that I had my chemistry teacher, Mr. Gladding, to inspire my passion for the possibilities that science can bring and that many people along the way, especially my mum and dad, encouraged me to be adventurous and bold. This magic combination of science and entrepreneurship is a gift we should make available for all young New Zealanders. Because ultimately, they will become the guardians of our new rainforest. We can all work together to bring about this prosperous future. And I know that if we get this right, we will all make Mr. Gladding proud. <laughs>